you guys hear me out there? Yes. All right, good. Jason and, and or Emily, did either of you need uh, screen share abilities? Uh, yeah, you probably want to give it to Emily. Okay. And then we do have one member of the public here in person. Ready to roll? Yes, ready when you are. All right, I'll call our comprehensive plan development committee meeting to order. Uh, preliminary matters. Um, the public is welcome to attend this meeting in person, but will also be available as a virtual meeting uh, to view or participate. Uh, I guess we're already past that. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll call the meeting to order and do a roll call. Uh, Phil Neese. Here. Steve Kelsey. Here. Jason Weaver. Anita Kemp. Elaine Nyberg. Mark Olson. Here. Linda Zilmer. Present. Uh, Ron Buckholtz. Kay Wilson. Here. Mark Helwig. And I myself, Jay Kozlowski, is here. Okay. Uh, we do have a quorum. We have five members present out of the ten-member panel. All right. Uh, were we uh, posted in the correct positions for the open meeting law? Yes, we were. All right. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we are on to D on the agenda, approval of the previous meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve our previous minutes? I'll make a motion. All right, we have a motion. Is second, there a yeah. second? We have a second. Any discussion, corrections, additions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the meeting of our previous meeting on 517 are approved. On to E, public comment. Is there any public comment at this time? Nope. nope. She's here to listen and learn? Yeah. All right. Uh, no public comments were received um, by, to myself. At the zoning conservation department. All right. Hearing none, uh, F, uh, hopefully everyone went through and looked at the draft version that was uh, posted at Northwest Regional Planning's webpage. And uh, we'll move on to uh, number two on the agenda the question and answer session of the proposed draft of the 10 year update of the Sawyer County Comprehensive Plan. This is Emily. Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I do. I now have the screen sharing capability. You probably do now. Before we get started, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, this is about an 18 page slide presentation and I'm thinking what we might want to do is send Frank Zufall a copy at the record and uh, maybe he can follow up. I don't know if he ever was able to get around to posting anything related to this on the Facebook site or in the paper, but uh, maybe he could at least do a write up on the plan for a future edition to at least preempt the hearing a little bit uh, to get some more information out there. So that said, this presentation, you may want to find a place to post on, we'll post it on our website, but it might also be good to put this on the county webpage at some point. Okay, yeah, if you want to send me the Kind of PDF for it, or if it's from a website, I can grab that and put it up on the website. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. So I'm going to let Emily start it off, and then I'm just going to interject with some of the key points that I want to I want to bring up relative to the to the plan update. So it's all yours, Emily. All right. So as we get into the Q and A session, we also have the brief presentation as. Jason said, so we'll cover the comprehensive plan update process. 
key highlights of the comprehensive plan 2021 to 2041, our next steps in the planning process, and then a time for questions. So in 1999, Wisconsin's Comprehensive Planning Law, Chapter 661001, was enacted by the legislatures to provide a framework for the development, the adoption, implementation, and update of comprehensive plans in the state. According to this state statute, Chapter 661001, a comprehensive plan is a guide to the development in a community for the next 20 years. And it also requires that a comprehensive plan be updated at least once every 10 years, which brings us to where we are today. So I'll touch on a little bit of some of the, some of the key points, uh, what was accomplished in the, in the plan process update. Uh, so first was adoption of a new public participation plan that outlined the procedures, uh, the opportunities for public engagement, uh, plan distribution, media, all that in a public participation plan. But that was developed pre-COVID, so we had to modify things to adapt to the situation. Uh, there are updated background data and statistics. Uh, all of the, the numerical figures that were based on old census data have been updated to the most current available. Uh, the planning committee reviewed and updated the county's issues list, and the issues list are the concerns that are of greatest importance to the county now and over the planning horizon the next 20 years. We added new background information and statistics. So there's new information that was not in the previous plan that is, has been included in, the, in this plan. A new population and housing forecast. These forecasts are again for the 20 year planning horizon and they are estimates of where the population trends and the housing trends are going and where they will be over the life cycle of this planning document. Uh, we've updated the graphics, the tables, and the imagery. We reviewed and amended the goals and objectives, and that was, again, a committee-based activity. Updated the base mapping, so all of the reference maps, things like soils and wetlands, uh, where there were changes necessary, new information, that was incorporated. We also incorporated new flood information from the Northwest Wisconsin Flood Study. Uh, in particular to address the hazards uh, faced in the county due to the flood hazard and some of the things that were experienced in 2016 kind of brought that to the light of day. Uh, develop new land demand forecasts, um, projections on how much land will be needed in the next 20 years for residential, industrial, agricultural, and manufacturing purposes. We conducted a new land use inventory to determine how land is being used in 2020 versus how it was used when the previous plan was made. What has changed? We consulted town plans on issues related to future land use, and we'll get into that in, in just a minute. Uh, we defined a, few, a new future land use plan for Sawyer County, and that again is town plan based. The committee reviewed and amended the implementation mechanisms, the policies, the actions, the directives, basically what the plan is, is st stating that the county wants to accomplish. All that information has been updated. And finally, the document has been reformatted and, and put into a, a different, more updated current format framework um, that should make subsequent updates of the plan much easier. Turn back to you, Emily. All right. With that in mind, Wisconsin's comprehensive pl planning law requires that a comprehensive plan also includes nine elements of which each of those nine elements was reviewed and updated during this 10 year plan update. So looking at the structure of the comprehensive plan, the plan is really three different components. Again, each of which we reviewed and updated during the 10 year update of this plan. So you have the background report, which is the compilation of the narrative, statistical data, charts and graphs. So this report documents existing conditions, identifies the trends and patterns and forecasts uh, with projections. And then you have vision and implementation. This section identifies the goals and objectives or the desired future conditions of Sawyer County and identifies the actions for achieving the overall plan's vision. 
And then there's mapping, which is a visual depiction of the resources and conditions. And then it provides a visual guide to the desired future conditions via the future land use map. So the next few slides are background report highlights, starting with population and housing. The chart on your left displays the historical Sawyer County population from 1950 through 2010 and 2010 through 2040 population projections. The chart on your right are the population projections alongside the household projections through 2040. And both the population and the household projections were derived by the Wisconsin Department of Administration. And in each, you can see a projected increase through the year 2030 before a decrease into 2040. So now I'm, I'm going to talk about some of those key demographic elements that I think are of, of most importance here in Sawyer County. Uh, and I don't think any of these are going to come as much of a surprise to anyone, but first is the median household income. And you'll see this table that's presented here shows Sawyer County's figures, state of Wisconsin figures, and then uh, the national figure. And uh, the median household income is, is lower. I don't think that's, again, a surprise to anybody. One of the big demographic challenges is median age. Now in Sawyer County, it's 50.2, and that's significantly older than the state of Wisconsin average or the national average. And that poses serious challenges related to things like workforce and making sure that there are enough people to fill the positions. And as everyone already is aware, we're, we're in a situation where workforce is of utmost importance and criticality right now. Uh, per capita income, same situation. This is just income that's based on the average per person, working person. And our stats are definitely lower than both the state and the, and the U.S. The poverty level in Sawyer County is also notably higher than the state of Wisconsin, nearly double the rate at almost 13%. So this is again of importance, especially in terms of, of providing services and making sure that, that folks that are in a poverty situation have access to needed resources. The percentage of children in poverty, poverty status, that 30.2 is very, very high. Uh, again, double the state average and nearly double the, uh, the federal average. Uh, so that, those are significant concerns. The number of seniors um, who live in the poverty level is pretty consistent with what we see in Wisconsin. It's actually lower than the, the national figure. Some of these other statistics are just presented for informational purposes, like the mean, the mean commute time. That's roughly how long it takes people to get to work. Uh, not much difference or statistical notation there. Uh, the percent remote workers, these are people who do not work in an office but work from home. Uh, this number doesn't factor in, into uh, the COVID situation, obviously, but again, it's fairly consistent to what the state and federal averages are. Um, total number of housing units, you can't compare those, obviously, uh, but once we start looking at the characteristics of housing units, that's where things get a little interesting. So the percent occupied housing units, those are, th those are housing units that are inhabited on a year round basis, not for seasonal purposes. Traditionally, things like single family housing, apartments, rental, uh, those kind of things. Less than half of the housing units in Sawyer County are designated as occupied housing units. So what does that mean? Well, if you go to the next column over, the percent vacant housing units is 53.3. Vacant is the opposite of occupied, and that includes our seasonal housing base. So these units are not occupied on a, on a perennial basis, just part of the year. Again, presents interesting challenges uh, you know, in terms of a planning context. We're dealing with a lot more houses uh, than we have in terms of, you know, as far as people go, um, than we have in, in other counties and communities in Wisconsin, but this is fairly consistent across the north. So because we have so many vacant units, we have a very high, what we call homeowner vacancy rate at, at 4%. That is, is quite high, um, along with a, a rental vacancy rate of 3.5%, which is very low. And what does that mean for rentals? Well, it means we have a rental shortage. Uh, you know, we almost half the federal average uh, in terms of percent available in the community, which is statistically significant. 
There are also a number of veterans in Sawyer County, um, higher than the state average. And of course, veterans, you start dealing with the services that are needed, healthcare concerns, um, again, some, some issues with public services. And the same thing with the disabled population. Um, we have a higher proportion of disabled folks in Sawyer County than both the state and federal averages. So another key statistical note here is the average household size, which is 2.1, and the average family size down below, which is 2.5. So both of these figures are lower than the state and the federal averages, and these have been declining over time. So as household sizes decline, there are fewer people in a home, fewer children, typically, um, because that's why that number continues to, to decrease. And that's a challenge for schools and making sure that our schools have enough kids to get the federal aid they need to stay open. So that is a real concern, as particularly you know, in counties in the north. Uh, the families and percent families, a family is just a married couple or a single person with a child, dependent child, um, and those numbers aren't statistically significant in Sawyer County and don't derive or, or deviate much from the state or federal figures. So these numbers are important. And, and I know we throw a lot of numbers into a comp plan um, and, and sometimes they don't, they're not easily interpretable, but every one of these has meaning and especially these ones that I've highlighted in red. Uh, next slide, please, Emily. So I'm gonna to touch on the, the key issues and opportunities that were developed by the committee early on in this update process. So issues and opportunities, these are elements of the community, aspects of the community that are of importance, challenges that are either currently being experienced or are projected to be experienced over the 20 year period, uh, or opportunities, uh, things to capitalize upon and, and create uh, new situations. Uh, so these were the, some of the key uh, elements that came out of that exercise. Things like natural resource protection and importance, the importance of that to the, the character of Sawyer County continuing to expand recreational trail opportunities of all types, motorized and non-motorized. There's a lack of affordable housing opportunities. And as you saw in a previous slide, we have a rental shortage uh, and rentals are typically more affordable than single family housing. So this, what that indicates to me is this situation is, has even more criticality than, than some communities that I've worked with. Lack of funding for home rehab and repair and needing to find sources for those funds um, to allow people to continue to remain in their homes or inhabit new homes. Uh, water and sewer infrastructure, particularly in the lake areas and the lack thereof. A lot of those homes are on septics and septics aren't necessarily the best thing for a riparian area. Um, and there are some opportunities to potentially expand municipal, we call municipal infrastructure into these underserved lake areas. Uh, wireless communication service and also including broadband, so things like cell service and the lack of coverage and how that affects things like public safety and lack of broadband and how that affects things like being able to work from home when we have a, a global pandemic. Farmland preservation and forestry preservation were two key issues that were identified by the, by the county committee. The need to protect scenic and culturally important areas coordination with Lakota Ray on a wide range of county issues. This came up under several different topics, uh, but overall the overarching theme is, is coordination with LCO. Promoting a cohesive development pattern, avoiding conflicts, making sure that development melds together and blends together in a way that's harmonious. Improved communication between the towns and the county. And it was highlighted in, in that exercise that there's been improvement over the sort of the last 10 years uh, but there's, there's room to grow in that. And ensuring that development regulations are keeping pace with growth. Uh, that's that, again, that, that's, a, that's a very important element to ensuring the sustainability of development in the future. A need for jobs, particularly manufacturing jobs and tourism planning and integration. And finally, promoting shared services and facilities between the county and communities, between communities and one another. Next slide, please, Emily. So then we highlight some of the new issues and opportunities that were identified by the committee. Diverse school systems with lifelong educational op opportunities. So that is an example of an opportunity statement. Strength of volunteerism and a sense of place from the people in the community as a whole. Again, an opportunity statement. Aging transportation infrastructure. Yeah, this is a big one. This is, this is a big one across not just the North, but across the entire state. 
and the lack of investment and the expenditure that's associated with maintaining transportation infrastructure makes it very difficult. Deterioration of roads due to heavy vehicles. Need for smart growth transportation systems, including things like charging station to support electric cars. Regulation of short-term rentals. So these would be the Airbnbs of the world or the VBROs. And we've seen a, a rapid increase in the use of these types of, of rentals, and not only just for income, but also as a way to occupy a housing unit, uh, you know, throughout the, the balance of a year, uh, but they come in, they come with big challenges, big challenges. And I think uh, Sawyer County has experienced some of those challenges and coming to terms with how do you regulate these? How do you have some sense of control? Um, so they're not just everywhere on the landscape. A shortage of assisted living and transitional housing. Balancing housing need with natural resource protection. And as I already alluded to broadband access, that came up as a new item as well it was in the previous version, just stated differently. Public safety coverage and ensuring that, that there is a continuum across the county of access to public safety in the event of a, a hazard or emergency. An abundance of low wage service sector jobs, but very few living wage jobs. And that's part of the, the tourism economy. Healthcare availability, and that, this is a big one that we see in, in just about every community. Um, access to healthcare, not just having the physical presence, but how do you get people there? Youth retention, getting young people to stay in the community versus going uh, to college somewhere else and deciding to leave permanently, relocate. And then having a year round economy versus just a seasonal. So that's diversification and looking at new ways to, to grow the economy in ways that aren't just seasonal based and provide access for businesses and industries that would consider locating in our area, locating in Sawyer County. So that's an example of some of the, the new ones, the new issues and opportunity statements. Emily? Okay, these are the land demand projections. They're in five-year increments for the planning period. So these projections identify future land needs based on current or anticipated trends. So for Residential land demand, these forecasts are based on population and development projections. So coinciding with a projected increase in population and a projected increase in housing, there is a anticipated increase in residential demand. For agricultural land demand through 2040, similar to all of Wisconsin, you'll see a forecasted decrease in agricultural land demand based on historic agricultural trends. And then for industrial land demand, it is anticipated to be low but steady over the 20 year planning period. And then you have commercial land demand. Um, rural Sawyer, Sawyer County does have a relatively small proportion of commercial land overall, but forecasts indicate increasing demand through 2030, followed by a slight decline through 2040, and that follows along with the forecasted decrease in population. All right, so the visioning, I wanted to just mention this real quick to reinforce the fact that the visioning piece consists of goals and objectives, and those goals, as Emily mentioned in the first slide, are statements of desired future conditions. Objectives are specific tasks, actions, measurable steps that the community must take to reach its goals. And they provide a clear understanding of the projects that need to be completed in order to reach the target, and that target is the goal. Next slide, please. So in the Sawyer County Comp Plan, the visioning is laid out in a tabular format with a goal statement on the top. The example you see here is the economic development goal. And the first line shows the arrow is the desired future. Um, it's very small on my screen, so I can't, I can't read it, but you can, you can look at the document to see what that states. The objective here is listed as objective one is the first measurable step to take to reach that goal. And then there are specific tasks enumerated under the objective, and these are listed as actions. So these are very focused, and the level of focus increases as you delve deeper into the goal statement, the objective statement, and then the specific actions. 
Also, there's a target, and that target is the time frame for completion. When do we want to accomplish this? At what point do we want to, to have to look back and, and reanalyze whether or not we've made progress on this? Give us a, a, a point in time to monitor from. This one just happens to be ongoing because a number of economic development actions aren't static. They are efforts that continue over time. And then the responsible party. This, this just identifies who the leads are on implementation. And you'll see there are a number of acronyms listed in here. There is a table included in the plan that clearly defines what those acronyms mean. Next slide, please. So the land use mapping, land use mapping, existing land use is a visual snapshot of land uses in time. And it's meant to be a static picture, but it's also meant to be an analytical tool to help future revisions or future updates, not only of the comprehensive plan, but any land use related planning in the county, a reference point. We've got one from the previous version, we've got one now from this version, and then once this plan is updated at some point in the future, there will be a third iteration. This will give us a much better picture of land use change, where commercial is increasing or decreasing, residential is the same thing. We are heavily relying, unfortunately, on assessment data for, for looking at land use change. And assessment data is basically the assessor's interpretation of, of how property should be assessed for taxation purposes. It's not land use based um, to a great extent. So it's very flawed. So ideally this, this methodology of using the inventory and then going back and redoing the inventory periodically and looking for change is important and of value. And I think that once we have at least three data points down, so by the time the next iteration of the plan is put together, we will have three data points down and that will certainly give us a better picture and a better method for analyzing land use change than assessment data. So there are two components, there's the existing and then there's the future. So the existing is, is somewhat more detailed and the future is a general guide. It's a visual guide to what Sora County should look like in the future, in the next 20 years during this planning horizon. So how did we derive the future land use map? Next slide, please. So the first thing we did was we consulted all the towns to see what their plan said. First, did they have a plan? And if so, was that plan updated? What, what status was that in? And we sent letters to each of the towns along with copies of the maps for them to edit as needed and provide changes back. This is a very similar approach to what we used in Douglas County, um, which was ongoing concurrent to this process. And here we did receive some changes from a couple of the towns. There were some that responded to us where there are no changes indicated. And the presumption is if there is no response uh, by the deadline that there were no responses or there were no changes that were required. Next slide, please. So this is what Sawyer County future land use mapping looks like. It's not a one dimensional map. It is, it is the compilation of each of the town maps that have been vetted and presumably are more local focused than anything that a county committee could do anyway. So th this is a common model. Uh, it's the challenge with using this methodology is of course, each town has its own set of standards and guidelines, has its own set of classifications. For example, residential may mean one thing in one community. It may mean something different in another. That's why we're strongly encouraged that in the interpretation of the plan that the committee refer to the town plans for guidance and direction and clarity on what they mean by residential or commercial, uh, basically what is ever is put into their maps. So that's the methodology for putting the maps together, the existing and future land use. Next slide, please. And those maps are available on our website uh, URL is listed here, and of course, if we post this document, it'll be ready and, and people can just click on the link and, and go directly to it. Um, but those maps are available for public viewing and will be through the hearing process um, so to ensure that people get a chance to weigh in on that. Turn it back to you, Emily. All right, and then moving on to the next steps. On the agenda tonight is approval of the draft comprehensive plan with any additions or alterations that come about tonight. 
And then with the approval of the draft plan, uh, Jay, the zoning and conservation administrator, will move the information forward to the county board to set an official public hearing date. And the next county board meeting is on August 19th, 2021. And then it's anticipated that the public hearing will occur in September, October of 2021 with a few official county adoption prior to the end of the year. And now we conclude with any questions. I have one question. Uh, can you give this presentation again at the county board meeting? Or at the public hearing, anyways? Um, the public hearing is not a Q&A. I, I wouldn't advise doing it at the public hearing. Maybe just elimination of the last slide. It was a great yeah. overview that really summarizes what the comprehensive plan is and what this committee has done to get mm -hmm. and I mean, maybe, I, maybe I can just snap and clip what you guys have said over the last 25 minutes and uh, even put that out there as a YouTube link for those that are interested. Yeah, that's why I was suggesting that we get this to the, to the media um, and maybe they can do a write-up. It would be great to have the, the record do just, even if it's a small article, and refer to this uh, because I think it does synthesize the process pretty pretty concisely. Yeah, so, like I said, if anyone's having maybe not necessarily questions at the public hearing, but just general statements and for the gifts of the county board adoption process and one of the county supervisors, oh, what is that about the comp plan? Because some of them are generically, they're not informed as to what the comp plan is. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to with Mike, uh, our IT director's help, maybe have a little snippet of, of a, a YouTube clip for the last 25 minutes where you guys had uh, eloquently gone through um, all the ins and outs really of, of the comp plan and the update process. No, it's very concise and to the point. I agree with Jay that, uh, you know, the county board probably, being, uh, I was around when this first got implemented, is going, what changed from the last one? Yep. Is a generic question and then, Jay's going to have to try and answer that, or if we can get it out ahead of time. Uh, here's what we looked at. Here's some of the changes. I think that's going to be a great idea because trying to do it on the fly uh, probably isn't going to be as uh, as productive as you guys just did. Yeah, if you don't want to do this spiel again, um, yeah, with your permission, I, I'll go go to Mike and we can we can snap you know the, the 25 minute presentation that you just gave and at least have that out there as a like a YouTube link for people to want to view it. Too. It's all right with you guys. Sure, of course, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, any other questions? I had, um, I'm sorry. Nope, sure I, was, I was looking at um, map number three and um, there, there's a snowmobile trail listed. Um, well, it's right by my house and it's not here anymore. It's been closed. It's south of Highway 77, north of County Road B. Um, it's coming off the east side of Round Lake and that is closed. There's no connector there at all. Are they working to get land to replace it? Nope the people bought and built a huge house and closed the trail. No, I meant the snowmobile uh, alliance isn't looking for an alternate road around that. I don't know, but it shouldn't be on there because people will run up and down yeah. the road looking for it. I, I think they've probably got an alternate already created. Probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? I that one right there? Right. Yeah, because here's my house and they look for it. All over well, if you place. can get that to Jay. Oh, the, do you know, yeah, what, do you know what I mean? Well, I want to pull up the map that you're looking so at. Okay. That's map three. On recreation? Yes. So Kay's referring to this map and where did you say along Highway B?
this portion. Can you, Emily or Jason, can you see where I'm referring to on this map? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the roads are missing. They didn't come through in the PDF. <laughs> so there's just a bunch of road symbols out there. But I see the segment you're referring to, the one that goes splits off in the middle of Round Lake and goes to the west or goes to the east, sorry. All right. Is that whole segment closed off? Well, I'm not a snowmobiler, but I just know that that is closed until you get out onto the lake and then the snowmobiles can go from there. Um, I believe it's closed from the from Placid Lake through. From um, Placid Lake through the Round Lake where it used to go there. That's I don't, right. I don't that exists. But I don't yeah, remember it ever splitting off. Over by Golden Rule, they can get on the yeah. trail and go yeah. up the foliage. But you can't get from Round through to Golden Rule on that old trail. Right, right. I don't know how much of a huge, uh, you know, correction that would be to make to eliminate that that segment of that Y. It it wouldn't be much. We're going to have to republish the map because, like I said, the roads didn't come through anyway. So uh, we can make that change. I just want to make sure we make it at the proper location. I'm sure there's a, an updated snowmobile trail map that's out there. This should this should be because this came from the Itbeck Trail network mapping that was through each county, um, so that should be the updated version. But they change it. This Phil needs they change it all the time. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. That's a pretty pretty good idea. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to um, come to the meeting tonight to hear, because I'm always interested in planning for the future and seeing how the tribe was part of things mm -hmm. contributing and, and um, some of the areas that we were discussing. So it was good to hear. That map plan. Yeah, and if you actually go and look in the plan, there's a lot of LCO and Sawyer and the towns all kind of working. But I know that um, the housing issue there, the need that we have, yep. and to me personally, I don't think our property shrink by the date that they gave. I think our property should be grow because of all the state now that's trying to keep them in here. Um, and the pandemic, you know, I mean, yep. people are just coming to a healthy place and um, getting out of that violent setting that's just happening there and coming to the more you know what I mean? Yeah, no, we've seen that and the pandemic's kind of changed a lot in the last yeah. year and a half. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the projections, if you go back and look at the original plan, um, I know our town, they had us projected to uh, uh, be bigger than Hayward. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And uh, where are you from? Uh, town of Bassel. Oh, so, I mean, some of the projections, they can only go by yeah, the underlying yeah, data yeah. and they project it out. So, you got to take those with a grain of salt, but it helps for planning. Yeah. yeah. We're planning for yeah. more people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have that need for housing. It's everywhere in the whole county, yeah, including the reservation. Yeah. Yeah. And I would add to that there are a number of entities across the state that are looking at the impact that COVID had on the housing network, on housing situation across our counties um, because of the fact that we had this huge influx of, of what we would call refugees, I guess, for lack of a better term, fleeing urban areas and coming over here during the pandemic. Um, and a lot of people have decided to build homes. I, you know, anecdotally see a lot of that going on, but I've also seen the numbers that have been pretty impressive from the Realtors Association. So that this is gonna take a while to analyze those trends and really understand what the long-term implications are, but I think it certainly is something of note. Yeah, I mean, I, we've had four or five houses on the lake I lived that sold right during the pandemic. And uh, a couple of the people I've gotten to know now they're from the Twin Cities, they're in their, lower to mid 50s depending on husband and wife 
husband who you know, has a job in the city, his wife is able to work remotely. She spent the whole summer up here and planned on staying until the snow flies and then go home. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of changed stuff. What was your name for the record? Um, Lorraine Dubin. I'm the vice chairperson. Okay. No, I'm glad you showed up. May I make another comment, please? Yes, go ahead. On map number four, I don't see um, the cell tower on Lowry Road, south on McLean. Uh, and I don't see the cell tower up in Spider Lake. Um, and it's kind of just north of the big 77. Yeah, there's a power. Yeah, Branch yeah. Road, yeah. isn't it on Branch Road? Mm -hmm. oh. Right by the, yeah, it's yeah. in their backyard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where the road turns to go to uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, Dodge. right. Yeah. Where was the other one? It's uh, off the end of Lowry. Yeah. See where that B is? Um, it's so small. Yeah, I'm making it's kind of, it's just above that transmission is substation. Yeah, and it might be covered up by some of those oh, other signs. things. <laughs> yeah, because it's off the it's off the plane there, isn't it? On Lowry. Yeah, yeah. It's Lowry yeah. is that one that's that's right here. Right. Yep. Yeah, that dead end. Right there here. should be one right there. It would show up. And I don't know where the others. Oh, there's Hayward. Isn't there one? There's a new one by North Nelson Lake that's down there too, it looks like. Uh, uh, there's been a few in the last couple of years. There's one out by Nelson Lake that's probably not on there. There's probably the one out by Draper that's not on here. What was the... Yeah, there's one out on... Um, there's one out here now, too. Um, it's off of Lake Loretta. So what was the data for the map from the problem? Was it uh, one six twenty one. But that 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 made that was the date the map was published. The data is probably F, it's is FCC data, and sometimes theirs is anywhere from one to five year lag on it. Well, but if we can update, yeah. Um, well, we just found three. So. Yeah, it's not at all uncommon that the cell towers and and frank, frankly, a lot of the infrastructure pieces are not captured by FCC data. You know, at the time you're you're going through a process, so it would be prudent to look at this and identify where there are deficiencies. Well, isn't there one in the uh, in winter? Is there one in the winter? Uh, I think they just have units on buildings. I don't know if they oh. necessarily have a tower. Okay. Is so there one uh, on the reservation? Yeah, that's there. Without the FCC data, how do we get them on the maps at this point? We can just, we can, if you identify, if you tell us where they're at, we can put that in the data set ourselves. Um, I can probably get you something with like a colored pencil marked over the top of this map. That's all we need. Okay. At, at this scale, that would be, that would be more than sufficient. You saw that other map I had up from, um, yeah, it, it looked like that segment to the east wasn't included in the county snowmobile trail map, so we could just remove that entirely, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's that's right from the Snowmobile Alliance, and that's the most updated ones that I would look at for snowmobile trails. And that was, that's okay, okay, I'm just making a note here, but yeah, th those that's a very easy change to make. And I had another um, idea on the economic development section on page six five. Um, one of our issues was short term rentals. <clears throat> and under tourism, they talk about cottages being sold off and blah, 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 blah. Don't you think that in 
a paragraph there, there should be something about short-term rentals. And the number and the increase and how the county has become the um, agent of the state. Part of the problem with that is there, are, there aren't numbers and there aren't trends. Uh, we don't have enough numbers to, to go by. There's not a, like a composite database that says there are X you know, number of BBROs. And the fact is some of these are open at some times and not at others. So it's very difficult data to capture. Although the county has a um, database of all their registered short term that rentals, license, yeah. ones that are licensed. That changes all the time, too. We could look at just putting the, something in the something, county. The county is issuing licenses as an agent of the state rather than putting numbers in that. That's one thing that does change. I don't know. We talked about it earlier. It seems like it, there should be something in the the county. The county issues license for short-term rentals as an agent of the state. To, and the numbers seem to be increasing. Or I don't know something. I don't know. We had some that went up, and now they've gone away in my area. A year and a half ago, we had a ton of them in my area. Now the people are living in them, and they aren't renting them. So. This is Linda Zilmer. I agree with Kay. It's been a trend. It affects our housing stock, stock available for residents. And it, maybe that paragraph just explains that the numbers that are being cited are based on those that are licensed, that are known to the county. Where were you looking at this potential paragraph? I think I, I, mean, I have 65. Uh, Under tourism, 65. Okay. At the bottom, I don't know, it talked about. In a table or in a paragraph? It's in a paragraph. Resorts have opted to sell off their rental cabins and more hotels are being built. Well, people are also renting their homes for short term rentals. I mean, you can talk about other stuff there too. You can talk about campground increases. You can talk about, yeah, everything else with, with the campgrounds that have been exploding too. Well, that's true. I just thought since it was part of the issues and opportunities in the beginning of our document that it should be included somewhere within the document. Yeah, could you just say something as simple as Hayward has seen you know, the trend of short-term rentals increase in the last few years and have become a licensed agent of the state to regulate some or something along those lines like the one sentence right up there in the back mm -hmm. paragraph. Yeah, we could include that. And if you have numbers, if we, those numbers are accessible, we could look at those and see if they're, you know, at least in a, a structure that would warrant portraying them in some way. Um, you know, I don't know how far back that data goes, but it might be useful to understand the number of licenses that have been issued and how that's changed over time. But I, sorry, go ahead. It goes back maybe two years. Um, yeah. There is one person that handles it. Uh, Our health department would have a current number of licensed short-term rental units in the county. Matt McDavid. How about uh, <clears throat> just have a sentence that says the county has identified uh, short-term rentals that are increasing uh, within the county in the last five years. Because the numbers, the numbers that Matt has, because we've been working with it at Bass Lake, uh, they were, as you go through the original numbers was zero, of course, and then it was 10, and then it was 20, then it was 54, and then it went back to 45, because people come and go. Some of these are actual uh, people that have our investment companies doing it, others are individuals. So I think just a, a, a sentence identifying that the county has identified short-term rentals and they have been increasing within the county. And regulate them. Yeah, I think it's important that it's mentioned that the county is the agent of the state and 
and is regulating due to the increase. I think we just need a one sentence statement in there. That's all I think, Jason. They were, they were you know, their Sawyer counties identified the, the trend of short-term rentals and has uh, become an agent of the state and regulates short-term rentals in Sawyer County. Yeah, so those licensing restrictions, um, are they comprehensive or they just regulate things like the time of year that they can operate, the number of people that stay? How, how detailed are those regulations? I'd like to understand that. Yeah, so to get the licensing, it would require an on-site inspection. They're looking at floor area for number of guests that could be occupied there. And they're also looking at kind of a health and safety factor for you know, cleanliness of kitchen facilities, uh, for carbon monoxide, yeah, carbon monoxide detectors, smoke detectors, water tests. Septic tests. To an extent. Hmm. Septic capacity. <laughs> Well, yeah, we can, we can identify that in a couple of statements, I think. We wouldn't identify all of the aspects that are regulated, but just indicate that the county uh, has oversight over particularly health and safety aspects of, of the regulatory end. All right. Yeah. All right, I've made that notation, so we'll put that language together tomorrow. Any other comments, maps, issues? Anybody? I'd like to make a motion. Well, we can move on to, to number three then here. If we had no other questions. Yep, I'm just, just waiting. All right, so we will move on to step three and uh, is look if there is a motion uh, to approve what we have with the changes noted tonight and or if there is uh, any other option that someone's looking at i'm not comfortable with making uh an approval until i've seen the corrected document maps and verbiage yeah i've called in a bunch I would make a motion to uh, approve the draft as presented with the uh, verbiage that uh, I feel comfortable with that uh, Northwest Regional Planning will do on short term rentals and that the map corrections will be in there. Uh, I don't I don't think it's necessary for us to have a whole nother meeting over one sentence. And uh, anyway, that's my motion. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second for the discussion? I would uh, I would second it for discussion. Um, uh, being all the meetings we've been through and the stuff we've asked Northwest Regional to do to update with our changes, they found them all correctly, I think. And, uh, actually come up with uh, good language from the discussions and put it in the corner that I would feel comfortable. And if, if need be, um, we could hash out the language and write it down right now on the short-term rentals. The maps, I'm not too concerned about. Those are going to change in three months anyways. But I think if we can put the little dots on that or identify it, I think that's a pretty easy process that they, uh, they can get that done easily too. Emily, are you there? I'm there, or here. Were you able to make the corrections that you and I discussed? I have done that, yes. Thank you. So that's in the online version now. It is? Yes. This is Linda Zilmer. I do have a question about um, some time back I had asked about when the uh, 2020 census data is available. Will that end up in the plan? Is that close enough now that it would not harm holding approval till we get a chance to look at the 2020 census impact? 
The delivery date on 2020 census is as ambiguous as ever. So we don't have anything firm. Um, they cite delay after delay after delay in political situations and everything under the sun for this. Um, there are only two variables that we would get from it that would be a value because it's everything is short form survey and that would be housing and population. Uh, do I think it's going to vary much? I don't think so. Um, I don't know that it's statistically important, um, but it's it's your call. If you want to wait for it, we can wait for it. That's uh, no problem with that. But I can't I can't guarantee that it's going to be available even in 2021. Um, uh, do we followed the you know their press releases for delivery and they just keep extending the time frame, much like the border con border uh, closures. So it, it's not uh, you know it's it's a crapshoot. And it's, it's your call if you want to wait for it or not. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, our original plan, the data was from a prior census also that to tie everything together unless you time it uh, doesn't usually work out. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, the previous plan, the, yeah, that's exactly correct. I mean, the last plan was developed at a period, I don't remember that, I think it was just before the, the release of data in the 2010 census. So we had 2010 census information in this document. Uh, we also have ACS data in this document and we could do an entire discussion on the validity of ACS data and the challenges associating with using it. But I think I've already alluded to that in, in our previous discussions. Uh, so that said, will that change the plan significantly? Probably not. Uh, I don't see it being any any measurable change there unless they really got the ACS data um, out of line with what the current situation is. But um, I, I, I highly doubt that's the case. It might be worth looking at, obviously looking at the data upon release. And maybe at that time, if there is something in there of note uh, to do just a, a brief revision of the figures, just incorporate the new numbers. It wouldn't be you know, from our end, it wouldn't be hard to do at all. I mean, just basically be taking the numbers when they were released. And if they are significantly different, then we would make an edit to the document to include that information. Um, but like I said, I don't know when that's going to be. Yeah, the way that everything else has been going, uh, I mean, this stuff was supposed to be out uh, before the end of the year when <laughs> and now it's gotten pushed back and pushed back because I kept looking at it too when we're when I was checking through all the tables going, geez, this is 10 years old already, but you guys, like you said, are pulling data from six other sources that uh, are up to date. And um, I'm assuming you don't see much of a, a trend line that is a big difference. No, and we're where the usual differences are, are at the small, small units. So you may see something in, a, in an unincorporated town where the numbers are, are pretty inconsistent, but at the county scale and at the larger municipality scale, it's, it's pretty rare that there's much of a deviation between actual release and ACS. You know, unless something dramatically happened during the year that census was taken, but I, I can't think of anything that was dramatic you know, during that time frame. So it's, you know, again, like I said, it's your call. If you want, if you want it in there, it can be put in there now, or excuse me, not can be put in there now, but it can be put in there upon release or it can be omitted from this version altogether. I, I, I'm not for waiting. My motion stands as given. Right. Uh, we have a motion in a second to uh, draft the changes with the two maps and additional language for short term rentals on page 6 5 to be added from by Northwest Regional Library. And any other? And the short term yeah. rental. Oh, okay. All right, that was the motion. I guess we'll call a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Aye. 
One opposed. Motion would carry. Yeah, I didn't hear Linda's uh, I voted to uh, go along with moving this forward. It's not to say that I won't have some separate comments down the line. You know, I, to move this forward, I'm voting yes now, but it, I do think the final product probably sh should be verified. I have motion approved for one. All right, moving to number four on the agenda. Potential public hearing date and committee format discussion only. Yeah, so I'll be bringing this to the, the polished version from what our, our motion was to update the maps, put that additional sentence or paragraph in uh, for short term rental. And that, you know, that is a, a backbone of the uh, Surrey County employment um, aspects. Uh, but then, you know, when I bring it to County Board, you know, they're going to want basically a recommendation from me, a recommendation from this committee as to, okay, when do you want to do this public hearing? And then what format do you want this public hearing to occur at? I see it as kind of three options as to where you would hear this public hearing format. One, you hear it at the county board level, which certainly has its pros and probably more so cons. You could have it at a sub committee level, say at a zoning committee level and or a land water forest resource committee level, or you could hold it as a separate meeting, separate public hearing, just in front of this committee. I myself would vote for the third option. I think the first two are, I'd like to have it as a standalone and, and uh, if more of the public comes up, I think we're the ones that worked on it that, and with uh, their help and their little slideshow we did, uh, I think a lot of it could be handled. But for the county board to take uh, 45 minutes added on to their meeting to go through what we just went through, I don't think it's appropriate. Uh, I don't think we don't like that, it. to be honest. I, I don't no. think you like it there. And so. uh, I think it'd be best if, uh, if they agree that we'd hold the public hearing for them. Linda Zilmer here. Uh, I think it's important to have county board ownership and authorization and involvement. Um, and also recognizing that the budget process is coming up. I am wondering if there could be a standalone county board hearing that addresses the comprehensive plan and the annual budget. And that kind of ties it together too. Uh, you know, looking at it from a planning and then also discussing some of the things that come up in budget discussions. Um, well, I was, <laughs> I was still nice. I, I've, been, I've been with the county board for 30 years, I guess I, I'd be in favor of a separate meeting. <laughs> I'm sorry, Linda, but uh, I, I think for us to get the proper flavor and encourage the county board to attend the separate meeting being held or whatever is the right way to go. So that's my opinion anyway. Okay. Now ultimately, they, take they set the date and the format, but I would imagine that they're going to be looking for recommendations from this committee and myself as to when and where and to what format to hold it. Um, I don't have this as a, a vote, but uh, just really as a discussion between us is you know, really where is the best case to hold this. I don't know when that special budget meeting would be held. It's generally held in October. Um, but they, they have a lot on their docket for the budget as is. My personal right. feeling is you're uh -huh. discussing budget numbers and stuff. You ain't, you ain't gonna put any time in on them. I'm um, putting this in. This is an afterthought when you're dealing with the budget and the deficits and the changes we got going on now that there's no way, in my opinion, they're gonna even yeah, I entertain it. So I, it's a good thought, but in reality, and what we got going on now, I don't think is gonna happen. Like I said, um, I think to keep this moving along, I think I would ask Jerry 
and we're not voting on this for discussion only, but uh, I, I think we're the best ones to handle. We've been the ones that were involved in every step of it. And like, like Phil said, encourage the board members to come to our meeting and they can sit at the table if they want. I don't you know, um, but uh, we got definitely got to get the word out on it if that's the way we're going. That uh, this has to be published as class two, I'm assuming. And it is the official public hearing, so the word will get out that way. But uh, I mean, we can even get their help if you know, the tribe's help. I mean, she's kind of getting in, in here and uh, interested. And I think it could be a productive uh, hearing if we hold it. Otherwise, uh, I'm just concerned it's going to get uh, ownership is one thing, but they turned it over to us, and they're the ones that are going to vote on it. So I think. Uh, us being able to explain it to the public and answer their questions is more, more of a benefit to the residents themselves. I don't know. I guess I have been attending uh, county board meetings now for like 15 years. I don't notice that that many other people do. But if anybody's been paying attention recently, uh, especially maybe among some of the newer county board members, there is a greater interest in having things vetted at a committee level. And as they develop mission statements, there has been some back and forth about um, where jurisdiction lies. And I really do wanna be sensitive, especially if we now have some county board members who do want to have more involvement, that that's respected. I would not want this committee or it to be viewed that this committee is gonna hold the public hearing um, because I really, I believe it's a county board matter. It's not even just a zoning committee issue. It's a full county board responsibility. Yes. They could be here tonight also. And they haven't been to any no, of them. Been any of and they didn't respond to our request for yeah. information and updating. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. We tried, we tried getting them involved at the committee levels, at the town levels and you saw the input we got on the maps. We got three towns that yeah. looked at their maps and made changes. We got one response back from one, uh, we're not calling them committees, but one person in charge and when we sent it out to all the departments, departments. and the responsible parties. That I, I agree with you. It'd be great if, if all these people stepped up to the plate and did it, but you know, I was at the meeting when they put this all together and basically they picked us to do it knowing our backgrounds and everything else and uh, and uh, most of us have been involved at the town level or at the county level that they put their faith in us and uh, it's up to them to make the decision um, I guess they're just they may not even ask Jay what what he wants to do they may just decide what they want to do so but I think uh, I think the best thing is for for us is the if we if we have them put us in charge of the public hearing. I agree with Mr. Olson and I think Jay's had heard enough from all three or four of us or five of us or whatever that kind of digest it and, and talk to Tweed and see what see what the county board wants to do. Um, so if the county board looks to me looking at this committee and let's say the consensus with county board is okay we'll hold it as a separate meeting what dates would you be looking at as a recommendation to them if we're looking at just as myself and, uh, i don't have to be there but we haven't had an assistant chair at any meeting since the first one um, I'm out of commission for the last two weeks of September, so they have to be within the first two weeks of September for my calendar. And October, I'm open, but I'm hoping we can get it in in September if they can get moving. And I, and if we can, I hope it's a date that we can have the courtroom rather than this room. Agreed. Well, number one, I think it's very important either it before Mr. Olson leaves or by the time he comes back because he's been the chairman and he's been through the whole process and 
I think it's important that, that Mark, uh, uh, if that's their pleasure to have the, us conduct the meeting, that Mark uh, be, be, be the chairman at that meeting. So uh, either the first part of September before Mark leaves uh, of an evening or after whatever, but uh, I think it's important that Mark uh, would, would be available. What are your dates, Don? Uh, I got a calendar there. I am out of commission from that September. Yep. Uh, it's the end of the month, so it's uh, the 20th through the end of the month. Okay. The last two weeks. You're on 20th of the end. Yeah. Okay. September would be better than October, in my opinion. Mine too. Mm -hmm. We can get anywhere that the week of the 6th or 13th, something in that period would help us move this along to get it done before the end of the year. Yeah. Um, the week of the 6th, I think there's going to be a couple of night meetings that could get a little. Conflicting. I don't know what this HHS board. I don't know where they meet. I don't know if they meet here. Um, but I, Mondays and Wednesdays work well for me. Yep. I, I'd be looking at the 13th or the 15th then. Well, that works for me. I would suggest that even if it's a committee run public hearing, that you do it in a week after county board. Because right now, with having those committee meetings in that second week and barely having minutes or things finalized for county board members to catch up on whatever has been done at a committee level and prepare for county board, it, it pretty much seals the deal, I think, for, for a no-show. I think that the more likely uh, county board members might show up after a county board meeting during the month. Well, I doubt that. I, you're going to get the same, Linda, you're going to get the same board members that have an interest, whether it's that week or any week, and the others aren't going to show up. Simple as that. You know it, too. I mean, we could do Monday, at least give them a few days before county board. We could do Monday the 13th. Let's well, do Monday 13. the 13th, and then if it, someone who does live out of town but has a home up here might be able to stay an extra day. Yeah. Good point. And we can always do it virtually too. Well, it'll be held both. We have to. It'll, it'll, it'll be held both. Um, but I'd go for the 13th also. Yeah, can our core group be there? Yep. Uh, Jason, question for you. Yep. Does the official public hearing require a, well, yeah, it probably would require a quorum of the committee still because they ultimately have to. Yes. By a resolution that recommends approval to county board. Yes. Okay. And that would be published under a class one notice, so it's 30 days. So we have plenty of time for that. Yeah. Anyone have a problem with the 13th on their schedule, as far as you know? No. I think with this, if, if I understood class one notice, I thought that was one week, not 30 days. But even if it is 30 days, that almost pushes it into October, doesn't it? As far as. No, this is July. Yeah, this is the September calendar I have up right now. We're not even in August yet. Oh, but this would be going to County Board to set a date in August. I got gotcha. you. Oh. Thank you, thank you, that's what I was getting at. Okay, so yeah, Jason, help me with this one. If county board meets August 19th to set an official public hearing date, do we run into problems with the class one notice of holding it on the 13th of September? Yeah. As, lo as long as the class one notice has run for 30 days and been published twice under chapter 985. So no, the 13th would one work because it wouldn't be published for, for 30 days because the county board hasn't approved the public hearing date. When is the county board in August? The 19th. 
The 19th? Yep. Yep, it has to be. Well, it has to be after you come back then. And then is there any time frame after the public hearing as to adoption by the county board? No. No, oh, then it, it can happen anytime. How about Monday, October 4th? I'm okay with that. Works for me. It's Monday. It'll be the first so Monday. We're we gonna run into anyone having a town board meeting or Well that's what means Tuesday. Yeah. Uh they're actually the second Tuesday. Oh, second oh. Tuesday? Yeah. And economic development and UW extensions the second Monday. So yeah, there's really not the only thing that first week is public safety committee so far on the calendar. Let's shoot for that day then. Six PM? Yep. That would work. That gives us time for the 30 days if they go with us or with another road. Yeah. Um I'll have that as kind of our Maybe it'll come as my recommendation as a public hearing date. And then it'll be up to county board to decide if they want to accept that or if they want to hear this at another committee level and or at a county board level. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. And we'll sure to uh, to get the word out to them because I, I'll, I'll drag Ron. He's vice chair. He should, he should be here for this. So I'll, I'll drag it in for that one. <laughs> and uh, certainly yeah, I'll, I'll pass it on to all other county board supervisors that uh, it'd be good if they were in attendance to that. If that's the way they choose to go. Right. All right. Anything else? Otherwise, doing nothing. We're adjourned till we hear from Jay on our next step. Yep, and then um, when Jason has the new maps updated, uh, we'll get those out to you guys, which yep. will obviously hopefully be before August 19th, so. <laughs> Good, anything else? We are joined already, so. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Right. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Thank you. <laughs>